Unit 1. Periodicity of Elements and Their Properties Lesson 2. Graduation of the Properties of Elements in the Modern Periodic Table In this lesson, we will study the graduation of three properties in the Modern Periodic Table, which are Atomic Size, Electronegativity, and finally, Metallic and Non-Metallic Properties. Atomic size. The atomic radius is used as a measure for the atomic size of the atom, and its measuring unit is picometer or pm. Now the following picometer is equal to 10 to the power negative 12 meter. Let's talk about the graduation of atomic size of elements in the periodic table. In periods, by increasing the atomic number from left to right, the atomic size decreases. This is a give reason question. By increasing the atomic number from left to right, the atomic size decreases. Because the attraction force between the positive nucleus and the outermost electrons increases. As you can see from this video, if we try to take an example, we will take lithium as example. This is the size of lithium and this is the size of fluorine. As you can see, the size of lithium is much more greater than that of fluorine. This is because the atomic size of elements decreases in periods by increasing the atomic number from left to right. In groups, by increasing the atomic number from up to down, the atomic size increases. And this is an important give reason question. Give reason 4. By increasing the atomic number from up to down, the atomic size increases. This is due to the increase of the number of energy levels. As you can see, if we take the sodium atom as an example, sodium atom contains three energy levels. The element that is under it in the modern periodic table is potassium, which contains four energy levels. So as the atomic number increases in groups, the number of energy levels increases, and thus the atomic size of the atom increases. The second property that we will study is electronegativity. What's meant by electronegativity? The ability of the atom in covalent molecule to attract the electrons of the bond toward itself. In this case, the electronegativity of chlorine is higher than that of hydrogen, so hydrogen will attract the electrons of the bond toward itself. Let's talk about the graduation of electronegativity of elements in the periodic table. First, in periods. As you can see, by increasing the atomic number from left to right, the electronegativity increases, as you can see from this scale. But in groups, by increasing the atomic number from up to down, the electronegativity decreases, as you can see from this scale. From up to down, electronegativity decreases in groups by increasing the atomic number. According to the previous information, we can conclude that fluorine is the highest element in the electronegativity. This is because it lies at the top right hand side of the periodic table just before noble gases. So fluorine has the highest electronegativity which is equal to 4. We can classify the types of bonds according to the difference in electronegativity as follows. As you can see from this video, these are the electronegativities of some elements. What are the types of bonds according to difference of electronegativity? The first type is ionic bond. And this occurs if the difference between the two elements forming the compound is more than 1.7. Like this between sodium and chlorine and sodium chloride, the difference between them is 2.1. 
The second type is covalent bonds, and we have two types of covalent bonds. If the difference in electronegativity is less than 1.7, it is a covalent bond. And if the difference is relatively high, which means near 1.7, so we have a polar covalent compound. But if the difference is relatively low, which means that it is much more less than 1.7 and approximately equal zero, so it is non-polar compounds. If the difference is zero, so we have pure covalent bond. Ionic compounds. They are compounds in which the difference in electronegativity between elements forming their molecules is higher than 1.7. Examples. Sodium chloride. The difference between sodium and chlorine is 3 minus 0 0.9, which is equal to 2.1. 2.1 is more than 1.7, so the bond between chlorine and sodium is ionic bond, and sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Polar compounds. They are covalent compounds in which the difference in electronegativity between elements forming their molecules is relatively high. Examples. Water, H2O, and ammonia, NH3. As you can see, the difference between electronegativity of hydrogen and that of oxygen is equal to 1.4, which is less than 1.7, but it's still relatively high. So, water is a polar covalent compound. Nonpolar compounds. They are covalent compounds in which the difference in electronegativity between elements forming their molecules is relatively low. Examples methane CH4, hydrogen sulfide H2S. We will see that in these two cases the difference between carbon and hydrogen is 0 0.4 and between hydrogen and sulfur is 0 0.4 which is relatively low. So they are non-polar compounds. Problem. Calculate the difference in electronegativity between the two elements forming ammonia molecule. Then identify the type of bond between them. First we have to know the chemical formula for ammonia. The chemical formula for ammonia is NH3. So we have to calculate the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and nitrogen. The difference between them don't worry, the numbers will be given. Is 3 minus 2.1, so the difference between them is 0 0.9, which is relatively high. So, ammonia is considered a polar covalent compound. And the bond between nitrogen and hydrogen is polar covalent bond. Let's talk about the third and final property which is metallic and non-metallic property. Elements in the periodic table are classified into four main kinds which are metals, non-metals, metalloids or semi-metals and noble gases. Let's compare between metals and non-metals. The first point of comparison is the outermost energy level. The outermost energy level in metals contains less than 4 electrons. But in non-metals, it contains more than 4 electrons and less than 8 electrons. During chemical reactions, metals tend to lose electrons and change into positive ions. While non-metals tend to gain electrons and change into negative ions. Examples. For metals, sodium Na11, magnesium Mg12, aluminium Al13. For non-metals, we have fluorine F9, chlorine Cl17. Let's talk about metalloids or semi-metallic elements. What's meant by metalloids? They are the elements which have the properties of both metals and non-metals. Note the following. 
It is difficult to know the metalloids from their outermost electrons. This is a give reason question. Give reason four. It is difficult to know the metalloids from their outermost electrons because they vary from three to six. The number of electrons varies from three to six electrons. So we have to memorize them. We have only four examples for metalloids. Bromine, its outermost energy level contains three electrons. Silicon, its outermost energy level contains four. Arsenic, its outermost energy level contains five electrons. Trillium, its outermost energy level contains six electrons. Now let's compare between positive ion and negative ion. Positive ion it is an atom of a metallic element that loses one electron or more during chemical reactions. For example, if we have a sodium atom, during chemical reaction it will lose its outermost electron. What's meant by negative ion? It is an atom of a non-metallic element that gains one electron or more during the chemical reaction. For example, if we have a chlorine atom, it will gain one electron, so its outermost energy level will be filled with electrons. For positive ion, it carries positive charges equal to the number of lost electrons. The sodium ion will carry only one positive charge, which is equal to the number of lost electrons. But a negative ion it carries negative charges equal to the number of gained electrons. For chlorine, it will carry only one negative charge equal to the number of gained electrons. For positive ion, the number of its protons is more than that of its electrons. As you can see here in sodium ion, it contains 11 protons and only 10 negative electrons but in negative ion the number of its electrons is more than that of its protons for this chlorine ion it contains only 17 protons and 18 electrons its electronic structure this means that the electronic structure of positive ion is similar to that of the nearest preceding inert gas. For example, the electronic configuration of sodium ion is similar to that of neon. But for negative ion, its electronic structure is similar to that the nearest inert gas that follows. The structure of chlorine negative ion is similar to that of argon. The number of energy levels in it, in ion, is less than that in its atom. For example, this is the sodium atom, it contains three energy levels. This is the sodium ion, it contains only two energy levels. For negative ion, the number of energy levels in it is equal to the number of energy levels in its atoms. This is chlorine atom, it contains three energy levels. This chlorine Ion, it contains three energy levels also. Examples for positive ions such as sodium positive one, magnesium positive two, aluminium positive three. Examples for negative ions, chlorine negative one, oxygen negative two, phosphorus negative three.